Hey everyone, today is 11-17, Wednesday, November 17th, and this is our evening show for the night. I did actually do a video the other day on um, Monday, but I was having audio issues and when I recorded it, it actually didn't record properly and it doubled my voice and I couldn't figure it out. So the video did not get uploaded. So instead of that, um, instead of talking about small accounts, which is something I wanted to focus on specifically, we're going to focus some on small accounts tonight, but the main thing we're going to talk about, the our main thing is going to be kind of part three, which we talked about the two personalities. <clears throat> so we'll do a little review. On the last two shows, not counting Monday, we talked about the two personality types. The aggressive trader who can pretty much take everything the person who is more like that um, and is is very easy for them to learn a strategy and to just view it and take it and just be like this, 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 this and to go after a name to take a trade and, and it's not very hard for that person. The downside lots of time for that person is that person has a really hard time not tilting, not bending into names and they give back a bunch of stuff. They'll give back a bunch of money throughout the day <clears throat> um, and they don't always know how to let go, how to detach. They can get sucked into names. They can take bad setups because they're just not afraid to take setups. On the other side of that, you have um, the trader who's so analytical, very analytical. It's not necessarily that they're just cautious. They're just very analytical and they want everything to be set up perfect, everything to be set up like this, like this, you know, and they won't take a trade unless all this stuff's going on and they'll almost talk themselves out of trades. They'll have a lot of information paralysis. They'll have things that just stop them from making money. They just do things to completely um, almost make it difficult for them to trade. So that trader, so those are the two trading personality types and that trader um, usually will have a lot harder time in scalping situations. They don't trust um, their setups. They don't trust themselves to make good trades. And they might not blow up as much, but they get a lot of FOMO. Um, they can never seem to break out. They can never even seem to get going. Sometimes the more aggressive trader breaks out and then they give it back and they always feel like they're really close. And they feel like they're really close financially because they're making money. The other trader, um, is not making as much money. The more analytical trader, generally speaking, and people that have messaged me, and this is just my what I'm watching, it's not for the whole market because as we get better, there's really good analytical traders who just find good trades and setups, and that's not the person I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about the struggling trader, the person who's having a hard time, who's trying to correct themselves, who is in that realm. So that trader is, is having a little bit harder time, and he... <coughs> Excuse me. And and I lost my train of thought there, so I'm just going to go on to the PTSD. No, I'm not sick. I'm just really tired. I've been out. Um, I was golfing all day, so and then came back, relaxed with the wife for a little bit, and just chilled after we got the kids down. So I'm just I'm just tired. So I'm trying to get my thoughts together. So I came from that just to sit down. So I might be a little slow starting. It'll take me a second to get going. Um, so that, that trader, the analytical trader is the second one, the PTSD, and they miss out. And instead of making money, instead of being able to make it and lose it, they they don't make as much. They end up losing more. They get FOMO. They're like, oh, I'm always missing. I feel like I'm right there. I feel like I can figure it out, but I'm just not there. Um, and the truth is they're just not really taking the strategies. They're not really giving them the opportunity to work or to fail because they're they're scared. And it's and again, these things aren't necessarily good or bad on either side. They're both bad to the extreme, and we have to identify them, and we have to learn how to adapt from them and to get better and to know ourselves. So we view ourselves. We see, hey, I'm strong in this area. I'm weak in this area. I do a little bit more of this. Maybe I should try to push this way. Maybe I should try to push this way. But the real trick. And this is something that we talked about on Monday, and I wanted to reiterate it today, and maybe y'all have had time to think about it, and we can add a little bit to the conversation, because we're recording this time, and I shouldn't be having sound issues, is, is the dance of trading, <clears throat> and is being able to do what we've talked about before, which is detach in the middle of a trade. So I wasn't here for most of today. I'm going to try Tesla. Let's look at that chart really quick. 
and I'm gonna guess that we had a good morning, or I left like 20 minutes into the day. Was Tesla a good run up later in the day? Was there anything that happened? Could I use this chart? It does look like I could use this chart. <clears throat> so I'm using the Tesla chart as an example of when we should, <laughs> of, of when we should be a little bit more analytical as aggressive traders and then when as aggressive traders or as analytical traders we should probably trust the system and be able to take it more and I don't know how great this chart is today again I left I left somewhere in here like I left in here I made my money and I went golfing <laughs> but <clears throat> let's see so Tesla nothing nothing really happened in here you could have played this breakout maybe but really up above day highs is when you would be looking, let's see, here's an here's a bar, here's an explosive bar. So let's say you took that this broke out, you saw it breaking out, it's way above day highs, and you play these bars higher here. You play these breakouts. This isn't the perfect chart to demonstrate this, but let's say that you play this and you make money, and then this this um, you get a failed one minute breakout on this failed one minute breakout you break even or you lose a little at that point as an aggressive trader because sometimes we know we've seen Tesla just go and just rip and run and just go up and it's just easy to catch and it's easy to make money and you can sit there and do it all day so what's the difference in this and in this where you had almost a failed one and done a failed one minute breakout here it pulls down you have a very small pop I would imagine it's really choppy super hard to make money so as an aggressive trader if you lost on one or two front runs right here in Tesla at that point you should realize in your head you should step back and be like hey detach a little bit and you should become or try to become slightly more analytical and slightly more cautious in your trading style you should be able to take a step back and you should be able to say, hey, wait a minute, it didn't break out. That doesn't mean like, hey, it, it, it doesn't mean it's not going to break out at all, but I don't want to give back anything that I've made and I don't want to just trade because I'm up money and I think it's going to go higher. It obviously broke out and failed and then here it broke out and instead of just continuing higher, it then broke down again. So I should wait for a better setup to come. I should wait for a uh, moving average to hit. I should wait for another setup. So it pulls down, possibly hits the moving average, and then it's basically just choppy all in this area. So you should not be playing, at least just, I, it wasn't here, so I don't know how it was going, but I assume you probably just shouldn't have been playing Tesla here. Or if you should, you should have been sized and you should have been careful with it. Because there just wasn't a really good setup here. It looks like it was trading super choppy and it was probably super easy to give back. I'm just guessing. So it comes down and it hits a moving average. So it hit a moving average and it never really broke out. It moved up, but it never really broke out. So maybe we leave it alone. We come back to it when it hits the next moving average. So it hits the next, the 21, on this is a one minute time frame, and now you get another breakout. It really doesn't work. So what we can kind of deduce from this is that Tesla isn't really moving, even though it held the 21 here, off of a one minute chart very well. So what, as a, aggressive or as a um, non uh, um, aggressive or I'm sorry as an aggressive trader what would you want to do you would want to be more analytical and think well one minute breakouts aren't working what do I want to do maybe I want to change maybe I want to change my time chart and maybe I want to try a two minute to see if there's a pattern here on the two minute chart assuming I'm bending bending on um, trading Tesla and let's look at this So we have a two minute chart here in Tesla. And let's go about the same time frame. And again, I'm sorry I'm a little slow today. I'm, I'm dead tired, so I'm trying to get my thoughts together. So let's look. After Tesla gets above the first two minute high, and it chops around here, here we go. So we had, this is that igniting candle. This is that big breakout. So we have that breakout. We have a two minute red bar, and we have this little pop. Okay, maybe that's something. We have another two minute red bar and then we get this pop. You definitely could make money on this move. This was a, it was 85, 
to the top of this candle was 88, <clears throat> so a three point move in Tesla. For a quick scalp, you could definitely quick scalp Tesla off that two minute. It runs up, maybe you play some of this, that's that choppy area, it looked hard to play, maybe you don't, it pulls back down. You get a kind of a failed breakout here, doesn't work, comes all the way down to the 21. This is all just chop. This is all just chop and slop. So as an aggressive player, as an aggressive trader, you should, if you are losing money in Tesla at this point, have been able to step back and to and to be like, no, this just isn't for me. This isn't something with my trading style that I can make money in and I can look to the room and I can find something else that's going to help me make money. What are some other names that move today? Like were there names y'all are making money in early? So I can check those charts. And there's definitely strategies that work here. You can see once it starts trending up, it's moving average, it pops. Apple just. APL. Yeah, Apple's probably a, a good one. Netflix, Apple. So on Apple here, the way Apple moves is different than other names, but the concept is the same, that if you are playing these breakouts here, every time I went down and you were buying this, let's say you were buying this on stock, and this is one minute chart. Every time it pulled down, you could have bought a candle. As an aggressive trader, you could have just bought a candle. You could have just bought a candle. Pulled down, you could have bought that candle, and you could have just played that all day with Apple, it looks like. It looks like it just ran up, you know. <laughs> so, it's important to be able to detach and to be able to see when your strength or when your weakness is affecting you and how your trading style is affecting you. So you can help others become, I'm sorry, so you can, I'm so tired today. I probably should have held off doing a show, but so you can identify what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong in the moment and change your style to almost a little bit more of the analytical side. And for the analytical trader, if you're gaining confidence in your trading abilities and you're seeing something go up like this in Apple, the next time you get that one minute breakdown, so let's say you saw all this happen and then you saw Apple pull down here. As the analytical trader, this is a mark one right here, what would be wrong with taking a quick one minute pop with the smallest size possible just to test yourself just to prove to yourself that you can take a trade and Apple's not a heavy risk so this is a name that you could actually take really easily without having much risk and you could have take this trade and it would have worked for you and you could have sold at any point in time but at least you would have got a win so you can identify by this chart just going up like this that it's a strong name as someone who's a more cautious trader and you would be able to buy and say hey next time it pulls down I'm going to buy the next one minute breakout and you make that your strategy, you make that your plan. It pulls down and then you take the next one minute breakout. So as the analytical trader, you have to learn in order to be really good. The green takes red was money, I believe it. The green, green two minute green takes red has been money lately. It's like one of the best I think the best strategies. Here's a two minute chart. Like look at Apple. That's no, not a two minute chart. That's a two minute chart. That's a two minute chart. So, I mean, look at Apple on the green takes red. Like, find a strategy that works for you. So here's a two minute uh, red bar. Look at that, boom. Uh, red two minute bars down here. You have a Apple two minute red along with this trend line support. Boom, pop. Another two minute red bar in Apple, pop. Another two minute red bar in Apple, pop down down here's your pop not as much of one there and looks like it consolidated some you could have taken I think every single red takes green and made some money in it at least if you're doing common nice put the stock on top hard to yeah so I what are y'all seeing y'all seeing my main yeah so I've got the stock so if you were using the stocks um, stochastics you could have just made bank and apples what curbs are saying today and i assume in other names too but when you can time that up just look at that you can mark it into calls right here in apple and you could have held this whole move up and then you get another two minute red bar and then you buy that breakout and if you can time this up with stochastics which if you're watching on youtube after the fact 
Um, you could see these charts that I have. I have charts over here. And you could time that up with these stochastics going down and crossing up. And when they're going in that right direction, you could just be writing those out. So find analytics that work for you and stick to them, but then learn when to lean into your strategies. Learn when to actually trust your strategies and when there's possibly just too much noise going on in your head and when you have too much other stuff happening and you need to kind of clear some of that stuff out and simplify it. So remove two or three of the things that make you take a trade if you're the analytical trader and instead of doing those things, um, find two or three things that really work that match up. So doing stuff like uh, using a two minute chart and timing that up with the stochastics, which if you're on YouTube, they're over here and I have a video showing how to use them and how I have them set up, how we use them in the room and time that up with a one minute breakout or a two minute breakout on a chart that's really strong like Apple was today. <laughs> you can do it with Tesla, but Tesla's a little bit harder and a little bit choppier. <laughs> and you can make money. If you're an aggressive player, I mean, honestly, you're just going to probably play this and you're just going to hit it hard and play it hard. But the trick is, when you're an aggressive player, and this is what we talked about on Monday, and I really wish that show was recorded, um, is when to realize that it's done. One way is the stochastics, is to realize you, you kind of need to give it room. But then when it starts falling down here, and if it starts chopping you out, and this is a, if you start getting chopped out like Tesla, like the Tesla chart we were looking at earlier when I was showing some of that some of that little chop you need to learn when to stop and when to take a step back and when to realize hey this ain't it like I'm not gonna bend into it I'm not gonna smack into it I'm gonna save my strength which is aggressive trading which is the ability to bend into names which is the ability to not quote unquote be scared for times when it's actually beneficial for me as a trader that's what's going to keep you from giving back your day. That's what's going to keep you from losing your money is when you can identify when a run or when a stock is not working for you. And for me, I can tell that by just when I lose two or three times in the stock. Like if I have two or three back-to-back -back losses on consecutive candles, um, then I'm pretty much done with it in the sense. Like then it can just break out without me and I'll catch the next time it, you know, it sets up for me. There's no particular reason that I need to give back my day or let's say I caught a lot of this apple and this is on a two minute chart and which is a much safer chart but there's no reason for me to lose on every two minute chart here like because I think it's going to go up I think it's going to go up and I just keep buying these dips when you don't really have a setup <laughs> and you just let it go against you and Tesla is an easier name to talk about that on You know, if you're playing it in here, we're at the beginning of the day, and you thought Tesla was going to go higher this morning, which I think is one of the hardest things to get by. And that's why I don't spend a lot of time in, like, post-market stuff and in um, a lot of, like, pre-market speculation about what I think is going to happen, if it's going to rip up, if something's going to go down, <laughs> because I don't care. You know when I'm going to play Tesla? When it's above the first one or two minute high, or lower if I'm going short. So it's above the first one or two minute high, and then you play the C strategies that we give out, you know, that, that we use in this room, and you just play it higher. If it just stayed in this range, why would I play any of Tesla in here? Why would I play this? Why would I play this? You know, unless I'm just guessing for a breakout. Now, this is just suspect and dangerous. This is just chop zone. And if it's failing on, like, here's the Tesla move early. Now, here's where it goes down. I would assume, so let me check the stochastics on YouTube really quick. I'm going to drag that over. And I'll switch it on uh, Discord too. Just let me get it there really quick. I'll go ahead and switch it on uh, Discord for you guys to see. <laughs> and again, I am sorry for... I'm slightly... <laughs> um, off as it were today. I'm a little tired. <clears throat> so this is Tesla after the run up. 
early in the morning. <clears throat> And so I'm shift Ling this. So you can see this in Tesla. So you can see the stochastic. So it's going up. It starts crossing down. And it did it over here too. But then it got halfway down and it crossed back up. So you, you know it's going back up. Right here you got this hard down cross and it pulled down. Um, that probably coincided with the two minute crossing down. I'll check it. So this is a two minute chart. You've got the same thing happening on the two minute chart. It's been at the top for a while and it's crossing down right about that same time. So it's been up above the 80% for a while. You can kind of see it's been up there for a while and now it starts crossing down. So in real time, you know that it's probably gonna at least pull down some to a moving average. It pulls down maybe <clears throat> if you were playing Tesla here, you took a front run loss here. Hopefully you didn't. Maybe you took another one here because it hit the moving average. Maybe it popped up. I don't know. And you're like, God, it's gonna go through. At, after that point, you know, honestly, an aggressive trader, you probably took a front run loss here too. <laughs> Am I wrong? Oh, I'll, I'll zoom in. Um, you probably took one here too, right? <laughs> For you aggressive traders, did you take one here? And then did you take one here? You know, that's what the, this is where the aggressive player gives everything back. So the aggressive player comes in and catches a lot of this, but then he doesn't know when to chill when this is happening. And if you're using the stochastics, you can see it's going down, so you should know you know, that it's not going to go. And in my opinion, you show how I trade, how I protected myself is I only give a strategy one time to work per candle. And if that, and even if the same strategy fails once or twice, then I'm done. So maybe you take this, which would be a good trade. This, you know, if this started ticking up, I don't know when this candle hit over here, you know, maybe you try one of these, but you should not be losing on every one of these candles trying to guess the next breakout in Tesla. Like, you just shouldn't. You have to understand at some point in here, especially if you take a loss, a loss, a loss, the stochastics are going down. The best thing you could do in this situation as that aggressive player is to be able to detach. To be able to be like, hang on, I just took like two or three losses. Who cares? I'm not going to take 30, like if I took 10 contracts and I took three or four losses, I'm not going to triple my size and be like, okay, when it breaks out and it's going to rip through day highs and it's going to go to 1,200, I'm going to hold it the whole way. No, you just wait. You just sit back and, and you go to another name or you wait until you get some confirmation on what's going to happen. A failed one minute breakout, you know, kind of happened. I'm going to wait. It hits the 21. After it hits the 21, you get a one minute breakout that works. So maybe at that point you um, try it again up here. You try it here, you lose. You try it here, you lose. Okay, you should probably. Eh, it's kind of going down. I'm. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to try this one again. There has to be some, I don't believe in stop losses. I don't use them to stop losses. I'm either green right away or I get out of the trade. Right away being five to 10 seconds, sometimes two to three seconds. Um, but you don't need to sit there and take a million front run losses. Find a way to limit your front run losses as an aggressive trader. Find a way to detach and be like, I've lost two or three trades. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna wait for the next strategy to set up. All right, we hit the eight, so now I'm gonna take the next one minute breakout. Okay, that works. So on a, as an aggressive trader, if you would have only allowed yourself one mark, one front, one loss, which would probably be this trade, then, or this trade, you would be fine. You would have only lost one time and you wouldn't have given back everything you made here. And then you would have waited for this moving average to hit the 21, it goes down and it breaks out and then you make money. Maybe you take a front run loss here, depending on how aggressive you're playing. This looks like a whippy candle. Who knows? Maybe you make money. Maybe it pulls down, you pop up, you make money, it doesn't break out, depending on your front run level. And then you come here, you think it's going to break out now. It doesn't. Okay, maybe I leave it alone now. Your stochastics pointing down on the um, your stochastics pointing down on the one minute. Your stochastic is pointing down on the probably pointing down and check that time, but probably around here, still pointing down or still going down on the two minute. Leave it alone. Stop trying to pretend, stop trying to visualize or think that you have to catch every move or that the next move is gonna make back what you lost before. If you're an aggressive player, you're going to n almost never end your account at day highs unless you did what I did today, which was I made and then I literally got off because I had something to do. I didn't take another trade. So unless that was you, and unless that's what you're doing, you have to accept 
a few front run losses and in the lower account and then be like, that's fine. Like I'm good with that. That's part of making this money. Part of being able to make that good money as an aggressive trader is being able to give back, let's say 10 to 20% of it. Generally speaking, it's not always the case, but a lot of times if you continue trading, you're going to give back and your account's not going to end at all time highs or for that day. And that's completely okay. And we just have to accept that and we have to find ways to limit the damage that we do so we don't tilt into giving back what we can make on the way up. For the analytical or the cautious trader, you have less of a problem with that, I think, generally speaking, because you might only take it right near when it happens. You don't front run as much. So maybe you only take one loss and then it pulls down and maybe you leave it alone or something like that. Like you, you're generally not as given to that because you're only going to play the actual strategy. You're not going to play like the aggressive, crazy front runs all the time and all that kind of stuff. It's been my experience that that seems to be that dichotomy there. So that's why I'm speaking in this case to the um, for the aggressive trader on how to stop yourself after you've made money on the aggressive part is that, hey, two or three front run losses, let's just wait, wait for the next setup, only take the actual C strategy setup now. Let it pop, if it wants to continue higher, I know I can make money when it starts running higher. I don't have to get in at the lowest point and catch the biggest move. If you're the analytical trader, so now we're gonna talk about you. If you're the analytical trader and you're seeing a name make money, okay, I identified that the name seems to be strong. I'm going to find a way to play it. Maybe you back check that while it's running up. If you're if you're not just going to jump into it and you don't have that ability to jump into it, you say you're going to play it the next time it hits a moving average and you're going to play a one minute breakout. So if Tesla had been running up here, as we can kind of see it had been, you know, it had been running up here, it pulled down to a 21, it broke off the 21, it broke up, and you can see, I think, are we seeing some elevated volume? And you're seeing some elevated volume. You see some selling volume, it pulls back down, and it hits the moving average again. Maybe you tell yourself, hey, look, every time it's hit a 21 or an eight and kind of broken out and pulled off, I'm gonna take it. Maybe you check that against the two minute. And you check that with your stochastics. Let's see if I can time that right there. So this candle, you have a, a red candle So you find something, and this is the most effective currently in this market environment strategy that I think we play, and people in this chat will attest to it. The two minute green takes red when the stochastics are pointing in the direction you want them to on the one and the two minute. Um, might work other ways, but I know it definitely works then. So we're here, look at this. In Tesla, one of the hardest names to trade. You have, easy and hard, you have a two minute red bar, and you have it being taken out here by this bar you can make money in that. So if at this point in your day, like as a, a trader, if you look here and you see these two minute bars being taken out and you look back, you're like, you know what? Next time I combine with the one minute, next time we get an eight test on the one minute and I get a two minute red bar on the two minute, I'm gonna take the next breakout. Maybe if you're that analytical trader, you learn how to identify when those things are happening through the rotation crew here in this Discord, through the people here talking, and you learn when these names are working. You learn what options you can trust. We talked about that the other day, how about how options and picking the right strike and all that is extremely important for this style of trading. And you find that niche and you find that that works. So you have the confidence in doing it. So you have a strategy, not a strategy with 15 to 20 different um, rules that you have to follow, but a few that you can tell work by quickly checking them, not with a billion lines drawn across your screen and all this other stuff, but the momentum of a stock moving up, a few moving averages, one or two triggers that have been working that day. It's above the first um, one or two minute um, you know, high and it's trending in that direction. And here's the most important thing for you cautious traders, it, ha it has to be something that you trust, that you've seen work and that you understand. In my opinion, that's important for that style of trader. For instance, it's not important for me. If somebody comes in here and tells me, hey, that like a uh, Kerbster and Little Kerbster came up with the stochastics, or they come up with them, but they implemented them here and tied them into Mark's strategies. I didn't had no idea how they worked and I didn't care. Um, they said, hey, when this happens, this happens. 
I put them on my chart and started watching my charts and I was like, oh hey, it actually works. And I instantly just started using it. I didn't need to understand anything. I could care less. I just looked at it and saw that it worked. That's how my mind works. So I'm saying that to say find something like that for you that you can stick on there that you can take with reasonable confidence like when, hey, when this is happening, I'm going to try the trade. And then you have to have the discipline and the fortitude to force yourself to take that trade. That's the only way you're ever going to be able to make an account to grow money as a scalper. If you can't and you don't want to do that, then there's no reason for you to try to sit in this room and be a scalper. There's just not. Because, I mean, I'm not being mean, but you just, you have to get over that at some point. And it does and it doesn't matter how you got to that point in your trading, but even, um, you know, even for me, even for everyone else, when we have hard days, somebody asks me, what do you do when you're having a hard week or a hard day or something else like this? How do you get over it? How do you get through it? Uh, I become more of an analytical trader and I size down to a super small size and I start putting together a lot of small wins. Small win, small win, small win, small win. Those small wins start adding up. I gain confidence and then I kind of get back in the groove of things. I see things happening. And I, then I'm able to detach a little bit from the market because I don't have that scared um, like noise going on in the back of my head. And I can just take the trades and the setups that I know that work. So find setups and strategies that you like that you can employ using this room, using the people in here. You can see what we're doing, understand them, and then eliminate as many of the I don't want to say your rules, but eliminate as much of the noise as you can from your trading. <laughs> and then for the aggressive and the other people, or the more aggressive traders, you got to learn to chill. When you're losing two or three times in a name, you're losing for a reason. Take a step back, adjust what you're doing, even if you're still going to play that name. Why did I just lose three times in a row? Ask yourself that question. Why did I just lose three times in a row? Is it the name? Is it the options? What should I change to win the next time? You have to adapt and you have to flow with the market and the name because names trade differently throughout the day. Sometimes the best way to trade a name is in an almost exclusively um, analytical, like it hit the strategy, okay, the strategy's there. And other times it's just that aggressive, like I'm buying every one minute breakout no matter what happens. I'm just buying it. I'm just smacking it. Every time there's a pull down, I'm smacking it. I did a video on that. And, and it works. But that doesn't work all the time. It only works for a select part of the day. And then when Tesla's going down or other names are going down, it doesn't work. So you have to be able to trade both ways to be consistent and to feel good about yourself. To be able to know that no matter what's happening, you can take money. You have to learn. You don't I say have to learn, but it's very helpful to learn to do both of them and to be able to adjust on the fly, almost like a dance, almost like a fight, almost like jujitsu, almost like whatever it is. Hey, this isn't working. No, don't smack it harder and hit it harder. Adjust. Why did I just lose two or three times? Like, ah, oh, this, this sucks. This is stupid. This name is done. I'm, I'm done with this. Maybe you should be done with it. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe we should see why you just lost. Are there indicators like the stochastics that are going in the wrong direction? Have we had two or three candles that instead of, if I go back to the one minute, and I'll stop in just a second here. As far as rambling, uh, do, we, do we have multiple one minute, like right here in Tesla, multiple one minute breakouts that have failed? Okay, I'm not going to play another one minute breakout. Obviously, the one minute breakout's not working. I'm going to wait for a two minute green takes red. You wait for a two minute green takes red here. And if you're looking on my other chart, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see how that, how that times up. So if you take in this area because you think Tesla's going up, it hit the 21, you buy a one minute breakout and it fails, unless you're literally just going to hold it, and which I would never do. But unless you were just going to hold it, you say, hey, a few one minute breakouts didn't work. Okay, instead of taking another front run, another front run, another front run, you just say, all right, it didn't work. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to get FOMO. I'm going to wait for an actual uh, green takes red. And that happens right over here. And then it pulls down. It looks like, I don't know how this candle happened, if it pulled down, then pulled up, or if it pulled up, then pulled down, then went up. But you could take the retake of the green takes red, and then you get your breakout. 
that's your trade, not a million of these. So to kind of put the last two videos together and because um, I missed the, the stupid recording on Monday, but to kind of put those two things together, there are these exact opposites in the way that people's mind thinks. And we can both, most of us can operate in the middle or towards one side or the other. Like you can slide that way and you can learn how to do that. But it takes time and it takes practice and you have to be honest with yourself and examine yourself, examine your trading and why things are working and not working, almost in the heat of the moment. Um, it's like in the military, strict rule followers are good for certain things. They're really good you know, in peacetime, the the parade generals, the marchers, the people like that, you know, all power to them. Um, it's, you know, great. You, you, you need that for a sense in the military. But if you're such, so rigid that everything has to be a certain way and it always has to be that way, when you get in a situation like combat, you get in a situation where things are wild, like let's say the market is, where things are happening differently, you need to be able to adapt on the fly to what's happening. And you'd be like, hey, this isn't working. I need to adjust my strategy. I need to do this. For the analytical trader, that's harder to do. And sometimes it's harder for a different reason than for the aggressive trader. The aggressive trader just doesn't detach. They get sucked into the name and they're just like, bam, 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 bam. And, and before they know it, they've blown up or they've given it back. For the other um, trader, for the analytical trader, it's hard because they're a set rule follower. And this is what's going to, and this is, and then I'm going to be up and I'm going to make money. And then I'm going to be up and I'm going to make money. And they don't allow themselves to give that room to slowly adapt their strategy live. Like sometimes you have to, hey, I'm not going to front run this a dollar away or 50 cents away. I'm going to front run it 10 to 20 cents away. Maybe I'm going to let it trigger. Maybe I'm gonna let it go through and pull back. Like you have to be able to adapt on the go to how a name is trading, no matter what that name is. Realize that and then change your strategy almost live, not change, adapt your strategy live to the name and how it's traded and how the markets are. That's what's gonna keep you consistent no matter what side of the spectrum you're on. Adapting live. And if you can do that, you can do this for a living. If you can be honest with yourself, give me one second. I think that's one of my my but sorry, one of my boys are waking up. I might have to run up. I've got to run up really quick and uh, put one of my kids down. He woke up. I will be right back. So if you, somebody else wants to hop on, add to it. I know a few of the guys are here. I'll be right back. I think what Gator's saying, it's uh, really important to have a certain set of parameters so you don't just like get fixated, tunnel vision, and quote, bent on the trade. I've been there many times before, and um, if you have a set of rules, I mean, for him, it's, you know, three failed uh, breakouts or three failed whatever setups he's doing that don't work, you know, he's hands off or one setup within one minute so you kind of have to find that you know what you're comfortable with in your happy medium and some people will also adjust their size like if um you know if if the first one doesn't you know go then they're going to take less size in the next one and, and keep you know sizing down or appropriately until um something starts to go so for me um i'm still working on defining those rules and the market is so fluid and um, subjective in a way like a dance that um, you know for me the biggest thing is following the momentum and what I do is I watch what would be the equivalent of the level two really really closely that's where my eyes are just glued and I'm watching the I'm watching the changes in the buys and sells. I'm watching, I'm watching um, the bid and ask how it's changing. Like, is it just like ask going up more and more and more, one tick down, three ticks up, one tick down, four ticks up, or is it back and forth like one tick up, one tick down, one tick up, two ticks up, one tick down, two ticks down, three ticks up. That's sort of like a, it's sort of like a little, I don't know, barometer where and then the speed. I'm looking at the speed in which the bid and ask are changing 
and the speed in which trades are going through. So for me, those are determinations of momentum uh, along with the volume and it's all in there. And I, I think the stoastics are also a great visual tool to just get a, a gauge of, but in the moment trying to time my entry it's a lot is based off of the setup in combination with what I'm reading on the, for me, it's raw data times and sales, basically level one, but it's the same thing as level two. So that's kind of just like hours and hours and, you know, days and hours of watching that, you kind of get a sense of, okay, when it's like this, it have a higher chance of it working. And then when it's like this, it's more like flipping a coin. So I think later, back because yeah. he is the uh, toddler whisperer and like two seconds he's done. <laughs> Somehow, sometimes. I think it might have gas or something. But yeah, I appreciate you taking over, Rose. Um, and I heard some of what you were saying there at the end and yeah, that's, it is big to find that niche. And I say stochastics and stuff because it works for me. Um, but I also do what Rose is talking in that level too and understanding it and just being able to do it and see it and watch it. And that's part of knowing when to change, you know, your style on trading a name. How's that level two or level one? Is there something that's changed? When that changes back, maybe you adjust back into it, you know, and you and you change how you're trading. So a uh, real quick question. So as far as um, what the, the mental part of what I want to say tonight and kind of talking through that and to kind of close out and not close out because as we kind of continue and grow and learn uh, we're going to obviously hit some of the same topics and so we'll come through this again it's like i'll never not never going to talk about it again um, but as far as the personality types and what i wanted to kind of get into now that covers a lot of it for the short term and and i'll come to possibly talk some small account stuff on friday night show and, but honestly, what we talked about tonight is a lot of what you're going to know for small accounts. There's not a lot of special stuff for small accounts. It's just you can only take a few trades. So you really want to make sure as many rules are being followed as possible. But then when, they, when they're when they there and you have confidence in them, you take them hard. And you And I don't mean heavy and stuff. I just mean like you take the trades. And you just have to gain that confidence when you have a small account and learn to trade it. To answer um, DeWitt uh, Ditter's uh, question, and if y'all like any questions, feel free to start asking in chat. I can I can answer them. So it's hard to do this not live because you can't see it crossing. But so if you're looking at the screen, you can see the one and two minute chart. One minute chart, two minute chart. You have a green takes red. So you have the stochastic down here below the 20% line. This isn't a great time um, because the stock's going down, but here's just showing how you can catch a move in it. So the one minute cross, look, I can't really tell, but the one minute is crossing right here, going up. So on the two minute chart, your one minute stochastic's crossing up, and on the two minute chart, you have a green takes red with the two minute stochastic crossing up. And that happens at the same time. And if you wanna see it live, go watch my YouTube video on stochastics, I think I have three of them and you'll see it happen live. It probably happened in Apple some today too. Uh, right here <clears throat> in Apple, here you go, here's another one, except I can't really time it up with a two minute, but you could do the one minute. So it pulled down here, the one minute goes up, like your one minute stochastic starts crossing up. You have a breakout, you could buy this breakout here off the one minute stochastic, and that that's your entry. That one minute stochastic cross up, crosses up with a C strategy setup. And I assume Apple probably did this a lot because Kerbsher men mentioned it. So it's like every time it pulls down, like right here, it pulls down. So right here it pulls down. Stochastics start crossing up. You get a breakout. You could take that. Looks like it was just super strong today, though. I would have liked to play Apple on a day like this. I'd also rather go golfing, though. So, so that is that to answer your question. I'm sorry for the slow um, start to the show tonight. <laughs> for me, I was just, it took me a minute to kind of get going. I was definitely tired, I still am. But definitely wanted to do a show still. 
I gotta prep more before I start. Um, the third is more just cautious, Jess. So the third personality type that I've noticed, and it it doesn't go to either side, it's cautious. So it's the person that's just cautious, and they could be kind of both. Like like they they're just like they just don't have the confidence, or they're just very cautious in their trading. And you could be cautious for good reasons or bad. You could be cautious because you just don't have the money to waste. What if I only you know What if I convince my wife to put this money in here, and now I don't want to lose it, and I'm and I'm scared of losing it. You're cautious. Maybe you're more default aggressive, or maybe you're a mix, or maybe you're more analytical. Maybe you have ego problems, and I don't mean this negatively. We all have some form of ego problem, but maybe you have an ego problem, um, and you can't handle losing yourself. So you're just so cautious. Um, you know, you maybe you can't handle telling your family that that you lost or something like that, and you can see those things going on. So you know, you're you're scared to you're scared to take losses. Um, maybe for good reason. Maybe you've traded and you've blown up accounts before, and you're cautious. <laughs> Um, and you are a more aggressive trader and because you're aggressive you know you can make money but you always give it back so you're cautious you know and, and you're scared to do stuff maybe you're an analytical trader and you always feel like you miss the big moves and you pick the wrong names so you're overly cautious <laughs> so I the third personality type and that I've noticed and that it kind of flows both ways and it's like an underlying trend are people that are cautious but not healthy cautious like for this job overly cautious to the point to where they damage their ability to trade <laughs> so that's the third kind of personality um, type and it can come from different reasons Uh, Sufian, you said look at 11.16, green takes red. Well, 21 minute, Kelly took that. Got hurt thinking. Uh, 11, are you talking about on Tesla, Sufian? Alright, let me look. 11.16 on Tesla. <coughs> I feel like I know which one you're talking about. It's the one I was skimming around with a couple of times where Tesla chopped around. That's why, so, here's what I mean when I said the video, for y'all who know who Kelly is, <laughs> um, 11.16. For y'all who know who Kelly is, Kelly has a very specific style of trading. I need two minutes here, don't I? And Kelly's style of trading... <laughs> I'm not going to say it's unique to him, but he can do it. He took this trade here, 11.16, like this candle. There's no two-minute breakout here. Yeah, 11, I'm not sure. Um, 11.14. Oh, this breakout here. <laughs> so Kelly, for those who don't know or are watching on YouTube, Kelly does a very specific style of trading and it works. It works for him. But it works for him because he has set rules and he follows them and he takes them and they work for him. If you don't know them and you just see Kelly's in a trade and you see Kelly wins a lot so you follow him, there's a really good chance you get wrecked. And that's not a knock on him. Like he's a great, he makes way more than I do. He's a great trader. And he does a really good job. Um, but he knows his rules and he knows what he's doing and he has his stop losses and he takes big losses too. And then he continues to trade and he makes it back because more often than not he wins when he does these strategies. So his strategy is, one of them, is when you had this big run up here in Tesla. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it here. If you're watching on Discord, you can see it. You had this run up. It pulled down, which his strategy says, to the 2 minute 21. Here's your first 2 minute 21 test. He bought this two minute 21 test. It did pop and work. So if you bought the two minute break with Kelly, you could have instantly made money. Um, stochastic wise too, that was a good, from what I can tell, a good one minute entry. 
and then if you didn't take your money, it went down and you got hurt. <laughs> because often Kelly holds for a retracement back um, to like back up to day highs or 50% of it just depends on on some things. So you, if um, Sufi, and if you would have taken that breakout as soon as it happened, you could have made money. If you held, you would have lost. And I wasn't here, so I don't know how it traded. <laughs> but for an entry, that's a good entry. And but then it failed and it broke his um, and it and it broke his rules. So he got in at eleven eleven. Um, he got in at eleven eleven, which which is fine if he does. Yeah. So he got in right here on this candle when it hit and then it started popping back up. He probably, you know, a lot of people probably got hurt on this candle. Yep. So Kelly's break, so for those who are watching, Kelly's strategy would be buy on probably this candle, <clears throat> the 11.12, and then he would have given it this whole range. So he sold and got stopped out over here. For some people, that's too much. But you have to know that when you're following him, that his stop is the bottom of that two minute candle of the previous candle. So previous candle would be this one. So he bought it as it ticked up here. It hit the 21, it ticked up, he bought it, and then he probably sold like when it ticked down. I don't know. Um, I'm not Kelly. I don't exactly follow his strategy. Sometimes I do pay attention to when he calls stuff out and I look at it, especially if it's a name that I'm trading and it can give me conviction because he's a very good trader, very good at, at what he does. But that's part of what I mean when I say don't just follow somebody blindly really understand what and why they're doing it how they do it and how your trading style your trading attitude and everything else works for you and like how you can incorporate what they do into what you do to make yourself better don't just pick up oh, Kelly's in it I'm in it and then you know then you just get wrecked all the time you're just guessing when you're gonna make money and when you're not you need to really understand what you're doing, find the edge in it, and then apply that to your, your trading and your trading style if you want to be successful as a scalper. <laughs> or a trader in general, not even a scalper, just a trader. Like I don't think you can mimic. I don't think you can mimic me exactly and make money or Boof or Rose. We can take what they do and learn how to do it ourselves and make money. And then the reason a lot of us are on the rotation crew is because we all trade similarly. So when we're talking, we all kind of, we all know what, you know, we're doing. Um, like, you know, I know what Rose is doing or I know what, um, you know, Mitchell's doing or Booth is doing when they're doing something. Like I understand it, but it is so, so I'm not trying to mimic them. We're just playing the same names and we're playing it slightly different. If you're trying to do that, you need to find out how you can trade in your style the strategies that we teach here. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that should be for everybody, you know. Like sometimes Kelly takes stuff and I'm just instantly like, no, this isn't going to work. And I usually don't tell him that, but like if the stochastics are running down and he's like, I'm in here, I'm like, oh, yeah, this, yeah, no. Because then other times he, he, and I'm like, this isn't going to work and he makes money. So... You know, usually if, if he's doing something, I, t I take a look at it and I'm like, yes or no. Um, and then I make the decision for myself. I'm, I don't follow anybody. <laughs> Except Booth's Crystal Ball. I follow that. Low conviction versus high conviction. Um, I mean, is it working? It, how's the level two going, MJP? Like, how's the, uh, you know, is there speed in the level two? Has it been working? Has it been trading, you know, in a, in a predictable way? Is it running up? Is there some triggers nearby? Um, you learn in different names. Is there some type of sector strength or is the market overall ripping up? Have you seen this name been trading strong? Has every last one minute breakout been working? You know, I don't know exactly how to say something is like, this is a strong conviction trade. That's part of this thing that you have to learn for yourself. Um, I have a lot of strong conviction trades that I take because I, in my own like process, my own OODA loop, recognize that and and I trust
trade it based on something I've observed and then I'm observing it naturally. I see it happen again and maybe I take more conviction. Is it a strong name with really good news that has some like, you know, you know, some crazy like Amazon is partnering with this company to do this and then this company starts running. That's pretty strong conviction, you know. Does it have a bunch of like reports coming out from, you know, these companies that are upgrading it and so it's strong all day and it's just working and every one minute breakout, every C strategy we're trying is working. I have stronger conviction there. Um, you know, I've called out one minute breakouts and names on the mic before and I say stochastics are setting up, uh, you're about to get a pop here. And for me, that's a super high conviction when I say that. When I'm like, one minute stochastic is about to pop, you're going to get a one minute pop here. For me, that's a super high conviction for a micro scout. Because I've seen it happen so many times. So for me, high conviction is one way. And then for other people like Kelly, his high conviction is something else. And you have to learn that through doing this, through watching, through practicing what you recognize as high conviction so you can take that with... Um, you can use that in a way that benefits you as opposed to just, you know, well, Gary thinks it's good or Gator thinks it's good or, you know, Kerbster thinks it's good. It may or may not be, but you need to have that confidence and recognizing it. And we can help you do it like stochastics or a way I tell, news or a way I tell, there's other ways that I tell. Yeah, that compression is really good. Um, and there's tons of strategies that are super effective. And you just you learn them and, and you adapt and you find a way to make them work for you. Um, as a random note, while, while we're on here for those who stayed, and I think I'll start the next video with saying this so when it's uploaded people actually get it, I'm going to be doing some um, <clears throat> strategy videos and some what we do here videos to upload so the new people coming in can kind of get acclimated and we can say go watch these videos go watch these videos um, and I might do some of those over the weekend and over the next coming um, weeks and just try to put some together that give an overview of what this discord is how this discord works the strategies that different people are doing I would just do my own like I'm not gonna record saying this is what you know Rose is doing or stuff like this but just so people can get a base and rudimentary understanding of what we do and how we do and what we look at and that will help them, I think, and help people. We can point them to the education channel. They can go look at the education channel and know exactly what we do here. So that will be coming, um, I'd say, pretty soon. Within the next couple, I'm going to start recording videos and recording um, my screen as I do anyway throughout the day. Yes, yeah, C strategy, simple, easy, effective is what that stands for. So I'll be creating some videos with that stuff and um, putting that out so we can help people and help people identify things. So all that will be coming soon. And any other ideas that y'all have are welcome. Um, I'm going to try to get better at broadcasting. I know my stuff's blurry on YouTube. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to mess with my resolution. I know that's the problem. I just haven't taken the time to mess with it because I have a bigger monitor. So I'm going to fix that. Yep, small account video. That'll probably be, I mean, I talked about it some tonight, but that'll be Friday. I'll talk some about small accounts. And kind of growing that. A lot of it is just identifying the strategies, getting the confidence in them, and then taking them. Finding something that's working and names that are working. But I will talk some more about that on Friday. Anybody else here have any questions or anything to add? If not, I'll probably at least wrap up the recording section of this. No, great video. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And sorry guys again for the slow start. It took me a little bit to just mentally turn on and get going. Um, I will see y'all tomorrow. If you have any questions, I'll be here for a few seconds after the video. If you're on YouTube and you stayed this long, please like, share, subscribe, tell people about it, you know, um, let me know what you'd like to see. I can always make different videos on different things. I appreciate it. I appreciate you hanging out uh, with us. 
and I'll see you all soon.